Да. Well, if anybody's listening, we are now live on air. This is a library's first question and answer session. Um, getting everybody together has been like pulling ten's teeth, just the same as after, before or after a show, trying to get everybody to come out and meet and greet. Um, so we've got the guys as myself, who some of you know, uh, looking slightly differently normally, uh, sporting uh, five o'clock shadow, Eddie. Uh, we've got Dan. Uh, Mr. Mosley, um, Stevie, Malcolm. Malcolm. Uh, we've got Paul on drums, <laughs> a long time tribute drummer. Uh, Mr. Angus Simon, um, Simon Davis, consummate pro. And we've got Mr. Johnson himself, Podge Blacksmith. A Cheers. lovely guy. And I'm glad, I'm sure that the next hour is going to be lots of fun with the intellectual discourse on offer. So what we'll like to do is I'll pass you over to Dan and Dan's going to reel the questions off. And if you'd like to, on your messages, if you could just mention uh, where you are from and um, then we can try and treat them. Dan's going to go through them now and we'll be as quick as we can and we'll try and get as many done as possible. Over to Dan. Cheers. Yeah, so we've had quite a lot of messages come in through the uh, Facebook page and Instagram. So uh, I'll start off with this one. Um, this is from a, a Village Rock Chick, which is a name on Instagram. And she said, who had the idea for the band and who brought you together? That's got to be Ed, surely. That's got to be Ed, yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, the band, I've checked this because I've been going through photos from years and years ago. Uh, the band formed sometime in 97. Um, I came along in 98, just to say that I wasn't with the band to start with. Um, the bass player, who is now in a Smith's tribute band, left a very short while after they were formed. The idea of the band was formed between two fishing friends, Clive Gibbons, who occasionally depths for us, who was the original drummer, and Eric Hodgetts, who was the rhythm guitarist. And they were carp fishermen. Uh, Eric was from Pontefract and Clive was from Hull. And together with Gary Foster, who came in as Angus, and um, a guy called Tony Gallagher came in, a stupendous vocalist at the time, and then uh, Barry. And that was 97 in Hull. So the band are originally from Hull. And that was the idea. They wanted to just play ACDC covers. Okay, the next question is from a Pete Baxter. It says, how's about you doing a tour of mostly tracks that don't get played live? The real fans love them all anyway. So, uh, I would love to do that personally because we would all get to play as favorite obscure songs. Um, but what you've got to remember is not everybody at our concert is a huge, massive ACDC fan. So although you might get a, a small percentage of fans at the, the show that will know the songs, you're going to get the people um, that don't know them. And personally for me, I think that it might be a bit of a disappointing night for them because they've come to hear all the hits. And if we, we play a show that doesn't include all the hits and it's just all obscure songs, then we, I feel, personally, I feel like um, people are not going to enjoy themselves. But it is something that I would particularly want to do in the future. Uh, I don't know about the rest of you guys, if, um, but, um, but well, we yeah. could always, we could promote it as a connoisseur's only gig, make sure people yeah. know that it's um, kind of obscure stuff being played, perhaps appeal to that audience. We already have some indul indulgent moments anyway with uh, put the finger, let's get it up. Um, let me yeah, we do try and stick in the odd yeah. obscure song every now and again. Yeah. Um, there's a there's only a small percentage of the set list we can actually change um, yeah. due to a lot of them being hits and the fans come to the show expecting to hear them anyway. 
Uh, but no, it's something that we, maybe we can uh, consider in the future. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Um, just uh, just we're on that. Just just let's just carry on with that one a second. I think I think um, we do. As Lad Pod says, we do try to put one or two of the aficionado songs in, and and we know a hell of a lot more. But I find that if we if we steer a, a normal gig towards playing some of the more obscure things, which I I absolutely love. Um, we're hunger on and quartered, and <laughs> those conversations <laughs> those conversations aren't, in, aren't, aren't great. And uh, I'm just interested to see what Paul thinks about that. No, I agree with Dan. Uh, at the end of the day, people are paying to see the ACDC show, which is what we've got to give them, really, and that's yeah. what, what ACDC do. And as, as Paul said, you can throw in one or two, but people are paying their money and that's what they want to see, the majority of people. That's what you've got to play. Yeah. We could always do a 15-minute medley of the big hits. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that either. Verse and chorus. <laughs> Verse and chorus out of each one. Just put them all together. What about your, your, your old band's original uh, intro? Yes, very much so, yeah. Maybe still in use for all I know. Yeah. Okay, so next question comes from uh, Kent Clark. Have you ever played any dives? Uh, I'm not entirely sure what that means. So not I'm so many in this way. band. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, <laughs> funny enough, um, Mr. Kent Clark uh, befriended me on Facebook this week. Um, so obviously may have, may have been a, um, something to do with, with this. Uh, I'll keep this brief. Um, yes. And uh, I mean, the guys who've been in this for maybe 20 years, like myself and Paul and Simon, um, basically uh, we did the hard work back then to get Absolutely. to where we are now. Yeah. That's how to look at it. So we're, we're yeah. playing art centres, theatres, massive uh, festivals now. But some of the places we played where you were getting changed in a disabled toilet, uh, and then you had you had to move all the chairs out of it as well. You know, um, <laughs> I remember queuing up for the disabled toilet. <laughs> yeah, you think you had it good. <laughs> I don't know. Is there any any one place that we played? You know, going back twenty years, Simon, that sticks out. Finn McCall's was one of them. Weymouth. Quite a few. Quite, quite yeah. a few, yeah. yeah. The Emporium yeah. Stockton. One in Edinburgh springs yeah. to mind. Yeah. God. Yeah. The there you, go. you have to play these places to, to, yeah. to, to, to know where you're going, and you, that's, where, that's where you learn your stage yeah. from. Yeah. It's, 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 Character building. Yeah. You've got to sleep in the back of the van, you know, and, and whilst it's. Do the gig in the back of the van. Dig in the back of the van, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there are a few, but not so many these days. The, the dives, I mean. No, I can't think of any. Not now. All good now. Yeah. Mind you, I've only been in the band a short while, so... so well, uh, not that long. Well, a couple of years, at least. Three. Come... Is it three? Three, three years. June the 16th. Oh, of course, yeah, three years, yeah. My first one was St. Donuts, June 16th. Yeah. Uh, 2017. I don't think we should really be naming and shaming these venues though because they might be still they are into that they're still going they wouldn't really <laughs> want to be called dives would they yeah that would well they're not dives they're like <laughs> places maybe it's a venue maybe it's a new venue dives 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 <laughs> <laughs> dive in <laughs> dive. okay this one's from lynn brennan i want to say apologize if i've pronounced that wrong um i'll direct this one at podge uh, do you think the rumours of ACDC getting back together with Brian Johnson are true? Oh, Lynn, Lynn Brennan, which I presume is a very, very good Irish name. Thanks for coming on to the Q&A and meeting us all. Um, in answer to that, I don't think unless it comes out of the official ACDC website, then um, anybody's going to know. Everybody can speculate, everybody can make up their own ideas, see a picture in the paper or, or whatever, and, or something's on Facebook or social media and everybody kind of goes, wow, they're all, they're, they're going to be touring again. I think personally, me, I think that they have some unfinished business with Brian and I wouldn't be surprised if, if um, there was an announcement after the COVID-19 dies down 
Um, maybe they they were already getting prepared to plan to announce before all this kicked in. I don't know, but nobody knows. ACDC is so very, very private. Um, so in answer to your question, Lynn, I would have said that they had some unfinished business until the COVID-19 came in. Um, but I would love to think that they would do the major cities around the world um, in, the next, in the next couple of years. That's my opinion. Okay, so this next question is from Gary Knight, and he says, I've seen you guys at the Black Market venue in Warsaw, the Real Time Live in Chesterfield, and at the O2 in Sheffield, but my favourite gig ever was at Warrington Par Hall in December 2018. Wow. What is your favourite venue? So I'll start. Uh, for me personally, wow. it's got to be Sheffield because that's where I'm from, and whenever we play Sheffield, I feel like it's always a, a great achievement for myself, knowing that uh, I'm playing such a iconic venue uh, with, with the O2 Academy in Sheffield. So uh, that's that's my personal favourite. Who was this question from? Uh, Gary Knight. Uh, if I can jump in there, guys, sorry. I, I think every gig that we play is special to them. Every venue is special because we never leave. We, we never leave anything on stage just because maybe one place is bigger or smaller or indifferent or, or whatever, but certain gigs always stand out. Um, venues like the Apex in Bury St. Edmunds, the Engine Shed in Lincoln, which, which Simon and myself were discussing and the rest of the guys were discussing not so long ago. Um, love the Warrington Par Hall. Oh, you, you picked 2018. For me, that was the best show of the year. Um, it's so so anyway that's where i am it, it, every gig has its own um great really really enjoyable vibe whether you play in front of 350 or whether you play to sort of like yeah. just, you know over 900 to a thousand as we do in 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 some of the venues i've already mentioned but uh, yeah great question really good question simon well it's difficult to pick one or two out because there's so many, but like Pod said, it, every place has its own identity and its kind of own vibe. But I, three of those were mentioned. I mean, the ones that come to mind for me would be Sheffield Road 2 Academy. Mm. Um, Warrington is always fantastic. I mean, it's just an amazing atmosphere. I get the chance to run around the balcony as well, do a proper tour and let the <laughs> rock. And um, the engine shed at Lincoln, maybe the top of the list for me off the top of my head amazing gig great setup big crowd stage is amazing sounds amazing so yeah there will be others they'll probably keep popping up as you know as we go along but yeah those three are good good ones for me paul uh no no favorites i love them all <laughs> good answer like, venues are like your children you can't have a favorite yeah, good point. Good point. Well, I have got a soft spot for real time because it's run by a drummer. Uh, <laughs> Ed, and we've got to take Ed, that yourself. load in and load out. Doesn't come into this question, does it? <laughs> well, that's no. another. That's a whole other conversation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. Um, yeah. Um, I, I have a joke when I've always had it in the band that uh, I've got my top five gigs and, um, you know, the Inverness Ironworks, I really love playing there. Again, oh, yes. yeah. Sheffield, um, put, you know, we played it out at Barrow. There's loads of places, um, Shepherd's Bush Empire. Um, and I've always said that, you know, I, there's not many gigs that are in my top five. That the last, at the last count, the last great gig I played was probably was we really enjoyed it. The came in at number sixty four in my top five. So you know they're they're all at the end of the day. I play hard no matter where I play. Yeah, yeah. I'm inside That's the it. music, uh, and I love AC. That's yeah. the Leeds fan coming out in you, isn't it? Um, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Sad day. Sad day for Leeds today. I'm yeah. afraid, Norman. Sad day for Leeds today. Oh, last old Norman. Norman bites your legs. Yeah. There you go. My birthplace, don't forget. <laughs> Is it? Please, I don't, yeah. yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, I'm a Yorkshireman. No I'm more Yorkshireman than you, lot. 
Strike him off the south, a massive box Yorkshireman. <laughs> we only lasted two years before we came down south. Uh, Rachel's asked if we can give a shout out to ha uh, Harry Roberts. Oh, Hi, Harry. 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 Cheers, Harry. How okay. you doing, Rachel? Welcome well. That's, that's, that's Rachel Owen, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Rachel Owen, Tracy Abraham, saw the guys, Harry Roberts, Andrew Roberts, all of the guys there. Lovely to see you, Harry. It's good, Cheers, guys. good to see you. Cheers, Thanks Harry. For coming. God bless. Well done. Thanks for coming online with us. Brilliant. Mm. Okay, okay. So this next question. Excellent. Yes. This next question comes from Rob Dean, uh, and it's, I would say, it's aimed at myself, Simon, and Ed. Um, <laughs> what guitars did you first learn to play on? Were they shitty copies from Argos, or did you learn on quality instruments? Uh, my first guitar was a Stratocaster copy. Um, I can't remember the, the brand, but yes, I know it was a Stratocaster copy. Um, I learned on that for about a year or so. I got Still an SG. Still got a shitty copy. You are. <laughs> Still playing it. None of them Sorry. are shitty copies. <laughs> Say <Sorry>. secrets. <laughs> Yeah, I got an SG and then eventually got a Gretsch and then it kind of lived from there. They're Grolsch, aren't they? You play now? Grolsch, yeah. Do you want to call them that? <laughs> Grolsch. <laughs> the top's come off. I do. Who are you then, Sai? <laughs> which, which was your first guitar? Uh, sadly, I haven't got it anymore. I wish I kept it. It's an orange Hondo. Uh, 80, mid 80s, mid 80s, Strat copy, quite cheap. Yeah. But it got me going. And then I bought a fantastic Ibanez artist, 1978. Oh, what a beautiful guitar that was. Guitar. It was like the Ibanez version of the Les Paul. Heavy, big, lots of gold hardware. Lovely guitar. I had that for a long time. Came back, back to me, sold it, came back again. But unfortunately, I could get rid of it in the end. I wish I hadn't. Yeah. OK. Uh, my first guitar was a Spanish guitar with about three strings on. And I managed to catch some... Oh, really? Yeah. I was about eight or nine, I think. My dad was a TV and radio engineer. So he gave me a little microphone and a, a, a back in the 70s, mid 70s, and a, and a um, not a beats box or whatever it was then, just a Dan Setti record, a player. Um, and I put the microphone into the player and overdrove it to the get a sound. Drop. And that's how I learned smoke on the water. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. You only and need then, two strings for that. Pardon? Go on. You only need two strings for that. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. I've played it in A, though, and I didn't find out until about 15 years later that it started in G. Well, that's yeah. another story. And then my, my, my first electric guitar was a, um, um, a K uh, with a tremolo effect thing. It was a Les Paul shape, but it had all these buttons on that you could play tremolo and wire and things. Can you remember that? Yeah. And that, again, yeah. I was about yeah. 12, I think, 11 or 12. They were the shopping catalogue guitars, weren't they? That was the one. They're the quite collectible now. Yeah, there was. I saw one for about four hundred quid last week. So, yeah, 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 they were quite and cheap. I bought no guitar since, obviously. No, no. <laughs> I, I have to say shamefully that my I didn't buy a Gibson SG till I first started with Dirty DC in seven ninety nine. Yeah. So I hadn't actually owned an SG until then. Wow. But I fell in love with them immediately. Yeah, one of my favorite can we uh, can we just give a shout out to uh, Karen White who says, "Hey, I'm a key worker in bed with symptoms. This is just what I need." So thank you very much, Karen, for your hard work. Hi, Karen. We hope Hi, you Karen. get there soon. Yeah. Yeah. Karen, going out to you. To everybody, to everybody who's out there working, yes, trying to deal with this this thing, you know. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. Um, Let me stop. God bless you all. Cheers. Uh, okay, so this next question comes from uh, Sean Nichols. Are any of you wearing wigs when you perform? No, is the question to the answer. Okay, next question. I think, I think throw this in Paul <laughs> to start with. Tell him the story. Paul, are you wearing a wig? <laughs> Go on, Paul. Well, the story about reveal the guy, yourself. Guy, Take your yeah, wig off. Guy comes up to me after the show. And says, uh, great job, mate, but you'd be better if you lost the wig. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a bit it's ironic. Coming. I think I was the only one on stage, apart from Dan, 
that wasn't wearing a wig. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm getting the cat out of the bag now. There you go. Guilty as charged. Yeah. Uh, my hair just won't grow. Uh, not since my 20s. It just won't. I'd love to have grown it. It, it grows about two inches and then stops. Um, so I've always worn the Diana doors and yeah. I can rock out in a wig and that's all there is to it. So we're, we're looking to do an older Angus look at some point. So, yeah, keep that well, one. I've got, naturally, I've got naturally baby hair. Look, so, uh, lively hair there, lively hair. Look at that. What a mop. Oh, yeah. yes. It's all mine. It's all mine. That super glue works a treat, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, that's nasty. That's slanderous. It's not Sandra at all. It's yours. It's mine. It's not Sandra at all. Who's Sandra? <laughs> Give her back her hair. <laughs> Did we actually have any left in you know, Oh, gold, I want to say that is. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Uh, hi, guys. Do you have any plans in the future to sell your own live wire merchandise either online or at your shows? Um, Pod your head for this one. Uh, conversation has been, um, it, it's, it's quite prominent um, in, in uh, live wire um, management at the moment. Um, the thing is, if, um, if we, we there are many, many people who want live wire t shirts like Simon's wearing, as you can see on the screen. Um, which oh, was by the way, can you thank um, Carol Evans for, for this t shirt? Yeah, I don't think I've got got around to doing it so no it was carol, carol evans um alan parkinson joe parkinson uh they were the ones who brought them to oh yeah, Bilston yeah. for us um beginning of last year um yeah. the robin two um but yeah yes. uh, in in um uh, reply to uh, the question we think it would be kind of if we did have merch at the moment which is forthcoming uh, to send out loads and loads of packages, which there would be, because uh, there is a long list of people who want T-shirts. We think it might be a little bit irresponsible sending out germs all across the country in packages, you know, with COVID-19. That's changed everything, isn't it? Yeah. It's a good thing we didn't get a thousand 2022 T-shirts made up, eh? <laughs> well, yeah. That's, That's true. Right. Yeah. OK, well, Maybe so... next year it should be renamed 2020 and start again. <laughs> Stuart Hilton asks, if you could play a song from another band, what song would you play? Paul? Uh, well, as a band, I don't, come out of yeah, I think. I don't know if that's as a band or individuals. Uh, let's, let's do individuals. Um, if I was, I'll tell you what, if I was to, to do anything... Hell for um, leather. It would, it would be... It would, <laughs> <laughs> Hell bent for leather. Hell bent for leather. Hell bent for leather. Um, it would, it would be. Um, I know what's coming. Probably something out. Probably something out of Canada. I would suggest Xanadu or yeah. Um, you know, Universal Juveniles, uh, but Max Webster. Uh, but I'd love to do. Won't get full again. Won't won't get full again. Is a track which I used to do. Um, yeah, brilliant. With my other yes. bands and yeah. Oh yeah, have that. Sure. I think Airborne for myself. Really Airborne. like Airborne. Similar not much of a departure, oh. though, is it? Um, I think Rush would be a good one to do. Yeah, Something. Rush as well, yeah. That's it, Rush, yeah. yeah. Something from around 80, 81. Caress of Steel. Moving Pictures, yeah, Bastille Day would be good. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Love I'd that. love it. Yeah. love to do that. Yeah. In fact, we do in sound checks sometimes play a bit of Rush, so. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, we just have a default thing. Xanadu, full yeah. stop. That's the track. Yeah, that's the track. Uh, that's Carl, the story. And then, then there are also tracks I'd like to do that I can play. Carl yeah. Carl uh, Cardus, Cardus, yes, uh, Carl Cardus, known as the Kiri Mal, says, "How are you finding it not being able to rehearse together, Podge?" Very difficult. Because we don't rehearse together anyway. Um, we, we, we... <laughs> <laughs> As you probably know. That was an effortless <laughs> statement. <laughs> yeah, we all know Carl. We all know Carl, love him. 
Um, no, because we don't rehearse. The only time we actually get to rehearse, because we live so far afield from each other, is in soundcheck. So, so obviously, soundcheck. Soundcheck. Yeah, sound checks are crucially important to us as as we're touring across the the UK and Europe. And um, but yeah, it's uh, it's very difficult, Carl. We've just got to keep listening to the records and hope we get it right. You know, hope you're well, buddy. By the way, nice to hear from you. Uh, okay, um, Kevin Harrison said, "This is for you, Simon. What happened to your leg at home for this year?" Ah. Uh. What didn't happen to my leg? <laughs> no, I came off. The, there was a, a huge PA bin either side of the stage, which happened to be exactly the same height as the stage. But there was a gap between the stage and each of the PA bins of about twenty centimeters. Mm. Now I'd run onto these bins quite a few times already, and I've done that gig year in year out. That's another one of my favourites, by the way. And. Um, for some reason I turned around at the end of the solo and shoot the thrill and I my foot went down this gap. It just caught on the gap and I my whole weight and momentum kind of kept me going. So it went down to the knee and all my weight went onto my shin. So it was extremely painful and um, debilitating. Because it caught the side of the caster on the way down, didn't it? Yeah, the casters were the reason no. the casters are on the side of the, the cabs, so that, that was what's causing the gaps these big great casters. So I caught the caster on the way down as well. So it was got kind of a double whammy on the leg. It was, yeah. it was painful. So um, I thought I'd broken it. Seriously did think I'd broken something. Um, I did chip my fibula, it turned out, but it didn't crack it all the way through. So uh, we came off to the side of the stage, managed to get some bandages and some medication down my throat and I somehow got through. I did feel a bit strange hopping about though. Um, I, I wanted the show to go on. It had to go on. I, yeah. I did contemplate sitting on the drum riser at one point, but yeah. it's not very Angus, is it? We'll leave that to Axel Rose. Mm -hmm. On his throne. Yeah. Uh, Julie Winger says, most embarrassing moment on stage. Oh, apart from that one. <laughs> <laughs> There's another one at home first. Yes, the year before. That's the one. Uh, I don't know if we should, <laughs> should we broadcast this? <laughs> no, no. Um, I, well, coming back on stage on Dave's shoulders, who's the Bond Scott at the time, uh, he went to put me down and something went wrong. Uh, the official explanation was that my foot got caught in his denim jacket and I, as I went forward, my laces got caught in the button and I couldn't detach myself in time. So I went flat on my face with Dave rapidly coming down behind me and his wig coming off. And then Pod running on stage trying to pick him up and put his wig on for him while he tried to right himself. It was a very spinal tap moment. Yeah, but no one noticed. Cops. <laughs> yeah, but no one noticed. <laughs> no one noticed. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else got an embarrassing moment? It's I know one for Ed. <laughs> Where do we start? The, 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 the two, the, the first one was back in about 2003 at the Nags Head at Nuneaton. Uh, Gary was Angus at the time. Lovely guy, Gary. And at the Nags Head at Nuneaton, there was a pillar um, on the left-hand side of the stage in front of where I played. Um, and because of that, Gary had to manoeuvre around me to get to his tuna. And at the end of the second song, and I know it was Hell in a Bad Place was the third song, Gary came around me to tune. I leant down and I was tuning. And so I'm leant down, looking down. And when I'm down there tuning, suddenly I felt clean, clean air over my head. <laughs> I thought, oh, my wig's dropped off. So I looked down where I was tuning. I couldn't see it. Um, and then... Um, so I'm looking on the floor and Clive started Hell Any Bad Place to Be and we're playing and I'm, I'm sort of hunching down playing the start of the song and looking to see where my wig's gone and still not being able to find it and so I thought well I can't see it I'll play I looked up and Gary had took it clean off my head as the guitar at the ends of the strings on the headstock and as he did the as he did the duck walk as he did the duck walk down with the guitar headstock in his head, 
the wig was flying around <laughs> onto the stage. And I couldn't do nothing but laugh. And Daz, who was the drummer, nearly fell off the, the stool. And yeah. I, 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 I coolly walked towards the front of the stage, picked the, picked the wig up, disappeared into the dressing room, which was a curtain uh, next to some, some seats, uh, popped it back on and walked back on and carried on playing. Yeah. And the other one that Dan's referring to, I don't know whether I should. <laughs> <laughs> that was the one about. I was thinking of. Bath Comedia. We could do the Thunderstruck one, though. Which was that? A, a dear, a dear ex-member of the band confusing the cannons. <laughs> <laughs> Letting the cannons off in Thunderstruck. Oh, God, yeah. Instead of Let There Be Rock. Uh, uh, for those about to rock. That was quite embarrassing. Yeah. I don't know how to explain that one. I do remember at Blackhall um, when Dave Lovin was with us and um, he took off his waistcoat at Blackhall, do you remember? And he's doing this and he let go of it and he went straight up into the rafters, right in front of the cannons. And the next thing was, as you see, Tim, Tim, by the way, everybody is our, um, is our financial director, he's our stage manager, he's guitar tech. He's guitar tech. Every, yeah, brilliant. And uh, the next thing you see after about six or seven minutes, like a Morecambe and Wise moment, is this big pole coming on side stage, trying to put <laughs> this, this waistcoat off the top. Of the <laughs> like a shepherd's crook. <laughs> Do you remember? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that, that was funny. <laughs> that There's was a few for you. Yeah. Oh, and 63.99.42 or whatever. Oh, yeah, that was, that was good. Whatever I'm supposed to sing. It wasn't embarrassing, though. It was just quite amusing. It was amusing for all of you, because you all turned around and went, what the hell was that? I don't know what the numbers are. I think the worst things are falling over on stage, skipping over monitors, bumping into each other, that kind of thing. Yeah. If you want embarrassment. Yeah. Short-lived, though. We get on with it. Absolutely. Uh, Robert Welland has asked, how about playing Back in Black from start to finish as a set? Would be better from that way than playing from finish to start. Um, yeah, <laughs> we've <laughs> talked about it. Well, we already started working. We have talked about yes, it. Yes, we have done. In fact, we're very close to doing it, aren't we? Sorry. Yeah. We were hoping to have it um, ready for the end of, or the middle of April, strangely enough, to to actually start performing the whole Back in Black album from start to finish. We've um, got all the tracks down. Got everything there, all ready to go. But again, in this unfortunate climate, yeah. um, it, it, it didn't happen, but it will happen. It will happen. I've got a question from uh, Maz Fradley. She says, Podge, yep. how are you finding doing both Bon and Brian eras at the moment? Well, I'm not doing both Bon and Brian eras. I'm doing a Brian era with Bon songs, who I was a fan of um, before Brian came on the scene. Um, you know, everybody loved Bond when he was when he was around, and he's a great lyricist. Wrote some great songs with Angus and the guys, and tremendous frontman. Um, I think Brian, over the past forty years, has has made the the Bond songs his own because I think that people who are probably now fifty years of age, like myself, only ever what? heard. Oi, stop it! Stop it! Are you really? <laughs> um, you know, they, they they've only ever heard. Brian, um, unless they go into the videos to, 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 to see Bond play. But um, yeah, the, the, the Bond songs are a breather for me personally. And I don't mean that in a, um, a big headed way, but they are a breather because Bond, he may have had a, a higher pitched voice, a higher sounding voice, but not in pitch. Brian is a lot higher. So when I'm doing songs like, you know, Let Me Put My Love Into You, Thunderstruck, um, uh, Hell's Bells, poor, oh, yeah, Break a, uh, Shake a Leg, you know, all them tracks, I mean, they are way, way up in the register and singing them in the proper key, um, which I can do. I know we're half a step down, but basically it, 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 it does save the vocal because you, you, do, you, you, do, you can burn yourself out vocally over the space of six, seven months if you're doing everything in the original key. Um, but yeah, uh, in answer to your question, Ros, so I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Faz. Oh, Faz, was it? Faz. Oh, Mas Fradley. Mas Fradley. Mas. 
Yeah. Oh, Maz. Hi, Maz. Oh, Maz. Oh, Maz, of course, Maz. Maz. Um, so, yeah, I, 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 I find it okay to be truthful with you, sweet pea. Um, I really do. Um, it, it's, 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 it's not a tough gig for me. Um, and I don't mean that. I just yeah. do it, yeah. So, but thank um, you for your question, Maz. Sorry, sweetheart. We're getting quite a lot of questions in asking about our rescheduled shows, whether they're going ahead, what's happening with festivals, stuff like that. So, um, Ed, do you want to maybe enlighten everybody what's happening with that at the minute? Yeah, I can, over the weekend, try and get something out to see which shows are rescheduled. I've been working on the diary. Uh, we're into about three months of rearranged shows. I would say about 75% of those have been reorganised already. Um, the uncertainty has meant that I've not been able to put the updated diary uh, out to all platforms at the moment. It's just the uncertainty, really. But what I will do is, if everybody asking, I will try and do that. I think I think for um, ticket sources and venues, I think they already know the dates that we've rearranged um, for uh, promoters and organisers. Um, we've still got to talk about some dates, uh, but we're trying to get most of them back in. Uh, we've had an Ian Mallock says, could we say happy birthday to his daughter, Erin? She's a big fan. And he says, thank you for looking after her after the Gosgo gig. She's 19. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah, I remember happy her. Happy birthday, Erin. Erin. Happy birthday, Erin. Give us a key yeah. then, Simon. Have a good one. Happy birthday. Give him, Sorry. Give him a key. Do you want to get a key? Hang on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. Hey, that's the same oh. note that I just found. Oh. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy birthday, Darren. Happy birthday to you. Great right timing. <laughs> Thank you, I think. That was the young, that was the young lady. That was the young lady who you looked after backstage, Dan. Do you remember? Yes. Yes, I do remember her. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that was an well excuse done. not to load out, wasn't it? Uh, <laughs> um, Luke Daly is asking, are we ever going to play in the States? <clears throat> I'd love to. Uh, I just, whether it's we can get the work over there. Um, um, as far as I know, uh, the, um, the powers that be in America would state that we would be taking jobs of uh, musicians in the United States, and they've got ACDC tribute, so why should we go and do it? Whether that's right or wrong, that was what I knew to be. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. But they got, they got, uh, they, they, yeah, they, they've got good tributes there. Yeah, yeah, you know, I like tributes. I like all the tributes, the American tributes, you know, they're really good. And, uh, you know, I, I know a lot about tributes. And that was a he really- He obviously does. <laughs> And they're all bronze coloured. Uh, Mark Blaze has asked, um, can you bribe us into playing Rock the Blues away? <laughs> Good old Mark Blaze. Yeah, one, one, one for Paul. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Paul. Yes. That's uh, anything goes slightly different, though, isn't it? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Paul? I don't know. Yeah. Well, you, you know that one. Yeah, you I like the song, yeah. Well, you should say hello to Mark. He's one of your dearest friends. He's been following you for years. Mark, how you doing, mate? Love to all the family. And Sarah, Rosie. Absolutely. Guys. Yeah, brilliant. Um, uh, this is one from Pete O'Dode again. He says, whose idea was it to do the Q&A show tonight? Good question. Ed's, wasn't it? Yeah, ages ago. I think we all sort of 
went round it and said, let's let's do something. You've wanted to do it for a long time, though, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, no one talks to me after gigs, yeah. so I thought we'd get a captive audience. That's what it was. <laughs> Good point. Um, Mark Denman asks, just wondered if you socialised, socialised, sorry, with each other away from the gigs. Yeah. Yes, we spend we more time with each other than we do with our families, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, no, it's great because um, when we do socialise away from the shows, we can actually, you know, chill out and not have to worry about anything for that night. Um, but yeah, if anybody else wants yeah. to add anything. Well, Paul and myself, we go out and exercise. We go sort of like walk in and we do stuff, um, um, you know, so so away, away from the band that, that there are friendships, you know, guys behind the scene like um, uh, Tim and John, you know, um, we, we because we are so far apart, though, it can become kind of uh, quite difficult um, to to like say, you know, you fancy going out for a cup of coffee or just meeting up and saying hi. I mean, yeah. I'm, up in, I'm up in Hertfordshire. Simon's down in Hastings. You know, the rest of the guys are in kind of Sheffield and... You all know, over the place. We're, we're all over the, all over yeah. the moon, you know, yeah. Uh, Susan yeah. McLaughlin has asked, are you still not going to play Edinburgh? Good question. We, which gig in Edinburgh? Uh, we... Uh, it doesn't... She doesn't specify which gig I just mean. I think she means Edinburgh in general. Yes, yes, we're going to come back to Edinburgh. Um, yeah. We looking at specific dates last year and this year, and the venue wasn't available. We've looked at other venues, um, and those venues, the dates weren't available for those prior to February this year. But we want to go back to um, Edinburgh. Yeah. And perform, yes. I've got lots of friends in Edinburgh, so yeah, we all have. Really glad to go up there and plead, you know. Yeah, fantastic. The Scottish are amazing. Uh, question from Dick Fothergill. Oh, asks, here we go. Uh, who drinks the most Jack Daniels in the band? <laughs> it's none of us. <laughs> Funnily enough, it's one of our crew. <laughs> <laughs> using using your repertoire, Podge, would you like to give us an impression of the person that possibly could do that? Right. Plus, I don't know whether you're actually listening to this, lads, right? Okay. Oh. Um, I, I, I loved it being on the tour bus with everybody, and I love pasta. Right. Um, <laughs> right, everybody who's watching this, this, this live stream now, there's a certain individual, his name's Mr Lawson, Paul Lawson, and we love him dearly. But um, he's a legend. He's a legend. Um, he is a lovely man. When it comes to drinking Jack Daniels and uh, and eating pasta, he just doesn't know when. To <laughs> um, My pasta. Dan's <laughs> pasta, because Dan's got medical problems and he needs that pasta. Make me sound like I'm dying. <laughs> <laughs> but if you um if you if you guys on on the live stream here. Um, get the opportunity, go and have a look on Dan Mosley's page and look for his vlogs, Dan Mosley vlogs, vlogs YouTube. one, vlogs two. Vlogs two, then you'll, it'll open up a whole new world to you on the tour bus as to what goes on. Um, but yeah, Paul Lawson, if you're watching, you owe us big, Big time, big <laughs> time, and congratulations on your new grandson. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. congratulations, congratulations, Paul. Fantastic, well done. And uh, would you excuse me? I'm just going to have a little top up. Yeah. Not that we drink on duty. No, unless Paul Lawson's been around here and had it all. <laughs> Uh, Heather Davidson asks if there are any rock and roll bust bust ups on the tour bus. <laughs> uh, yeah. Not really, no. <laughs> Apart from the odd occasional piss take. Any uh, bus stops? 
No, bust not bus stops. Not bus stop. Bust ups. Oh, bus stops. Bus <laughs> <laughs> wasn't too happy when I made his bed up with Arsenal duvet cover. Oh, the magical mystery tour. Oh, hello. What's this? What have I missed? Uh, any bus stops? Any rails? Yeah, on there? Any, on any rock and roll bus stops on the uh, tour oh, bus? You I thought it was bus stops. Only, only if, only if there's, only if there's yeah. Arsenal bedspreads and Arsenal pillowcases. Yeah, you weren't too happy about that one. But, no, not at all. But you and slept people, well. And people popping their heads in through the hotel window on the ground floor, singing "When You Walk." Well, yeah. You yeah. Do you remember? We don't tend to have bus stops, do we? Yeah, but they had just beaten Spurs in the Champions League final, so you can understand it. Yeah. Yeah. I think well, you moving, moving quickly. Yeah, on. I think yeah, discussion is the better part of Valor. However, yeah. there needs to be a certain amount of camaraderie when you're on the camaraderie when you're on the road. And absolutely. Got... So, yeah. Totally. Uh, Brian McDermott says Paul Lawson doesn't drink. <laughs> <laughs> you're absolutely right. Not in small quantities. <laughs> Who's this guy? Uh, Brian McDermott, I'm sorry if Bri I Brian McDermott, okay. Wrong. Yeah, sorry about this, but uh, there are trees on our planet. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> um, Must be a different Paul Lawson. Yeah, yeah, yeah Mort calling Lawson. Mort calling Lawson. His left hand claw shaped to the size of a Jack Daniels bottle. He's a good supplier of work gloves, though, Paul Lawson. Yeah, he never uses them, though. Well, I've been using them, they're great. I've oh, got a question for Paul. He never does. Yeah. Yeah. This one is from uh, James Arnott, and he said, did Paul enjoy playing on the lorry last year at Bonfest? On the lorry? Yeah. Yes, I really did, but it was pretty hard to stay on it. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when I saw Ed dressed dressed in a kilt. Oh, <laughs> full, the full get up, and I nearly fell off because I was laughing so much. It was pretty hard to stay on the uh, on the drum stool, but I absolutely loved it. It was fantastic. Yeah. Pauline, we love you. Yeah, and that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, John Hurst. I was the back in black chips. Asked, yeah. John Hurst would have asked, "What song do you play that you all really feel like you're in the groove?" Uh, for me personally, I'd say Let There Be Rock. Yeah, that's one for me as well. Yeah, I think that's a killer. I think as, yeah, that's pretty well. as of late, let me put my love into you for me. Yeah, yeah that's a good one. Well. Shake, shake a leg when, when we're on that. That is. I think we always feel we're in the groove, really, don't we? Yeah, I don't think there's anything... Look, you're always going to get something which pops out, but I mean, kind of... Yeah. Away from the five that we're always going to do. I mean, you know, tracks like Shake a Leg, Heat Seeker, when we're on that. I mean, that is. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah. Good Bad question. Boy Boogie is good when it's going well. I, I, yeah. I like that one. Yeah. 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 Good track. Uh, Andrew Where Ward is? has said, Dan, what song do you like performing the, the best live? Uh, I think it's got to be Shoot to Thrill. Uh, I think the, the rhythm parts that Malcolm lays down is, is brilliant. And I really enjoy playing that one, especially with the two. Different intro riffs. Uh, yeah, that's one of my yeah. favourite songs to play. Right. Linda Clark is asking, what is our favourite DC song to play? Or sing? It can't be one. Mine is, mine is uh, Put the Finger. Yeah. Great song. I, I, I can't pick one, I'm afraid. I can't pick one. Sorry, Linda. Um, Paul, what about you? Same I think, drum. Like, it's, uh, what you, if there's anything in the set that you haven't played for a while, like, I really enjoyed the last few months playing um, Up To My Neck In You because mm. I just love the song and we haven't played it for quite a long time. And then yeah. Yeah. The set. So anything you've put in you haven't played for a while, let, let me put my love into you. It's great playing that again because I haven't played that for years. So just stuff that you haven't played for a while, and then you put it back yeah. in. Really enjoy. Mm. Riff raff's another one. When it comes back in, it's good. Oh yeah, yeah. when that comes in, riff raff, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. great shout, Simon. Yeah. yeah. Uh, another question from Pete O'Dode. He 
said, how much sweat does Simon lose during the course of the full show? Hmm. Difficult to measure the millimetres. <laughs> you get we a Met Office man onto it. I, I do a lose a bit of weight, though. It, uh, it depends how hot it? it is. It depends how hot the lighting is. We measured him before and we measured him after. And a couple yeah. of microphones <laughs> dropped out of his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> That's Pete O'Dell from Carl O'Dell. It's not as bad these days with the park, um, LED lighting. They're not so hot. Yeah. I like the park ends. I like, I like to sweat under the park ends. Same as. Yeah. And I need to. You need Get to warm up, up, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> um, this one's for Paul. This is from uh, Grain Ball. He says... Uh, I had the pleasure of taking some photographs of you guys at the Robin 2. I hope your leg got better quickly. You, Podge, and the band made me feel very welcome. Um, I remember, Graham. I can't say, oh, thank you, it says. <laughs> so, so I guess that's... About my leg? Uh, yeah, I hope your leg got better quickly. Might have been when I had the... Um... You had the I boot. The car, I had the boot, yeah. I had That's to right, boot, yes. But, um, I tore my Achilles. So yeah. in between, uh, I was wearing the boot. I was um, taking the boot off uh, to play and then putting it back on to set up and break down. So. That's right. Yeah, yeah but nice. it's, it's all yeah, it's all better now, thanks. Thank you very much for asking. Yeah. Nice guy, Graham. If you remember, we all had, a, had a photos with him. Yes, yeah. Cheers, Graham. Yeah. Uh, we've got a good question from Natalie Williams here. She says... How do you balance weekend gigs, travel and work? Well, being knackered all the time. <laughs> yeah. It's a yes, matter of it's, having it's a lot to. to uh, it's a lot to sort With out. With difficulty. It's, it's a matter of having to. I mean, uh, logistics of travel, Natalie. Nice to have you on here, by the way. Nice to speak to you. Um, there is travel logistics. There is... Uh, hotel logistics, um, venue, getting in, getting out, um, PA tech, um, delayed times, you know, uh, there, there, there's, there's the, the, uh, delays on motorways, all sorts of stuff. I mean, can, can really get, get us quite het up and, and wound up before a show on a Friday, especially. Yeah. Uh, Friday's a pretty, pretty tough one. Um, for all of us, I would say more so for Simon. Um, yeah, that's a tough. that's a Hastings is a is a, a pretty disastrous place to try and get out of on, on a yeah. Friday, at any time. But um, you, you know when he's trying to get up to Hertfordshire, and then we've got to go to say Carlisle, or we're going to Newcastle, or or whatever. It's very difficult, Natalie, and it's a, a very difficult question to answer. But but hopefully, um, that's a kind of an answer where. You know, we we work furiously um, together and effortlessly. Um, effortlessly. To, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, private joke in there. Yeah. Um, sure. to, to, to get it, to you it, guys. It's the so, passion as well that uh, keeps us going. It is, Dan. It is. But it's nice to hear from you, Natalie. Thanks for thanks for dropping in. Uh, Julia Riant is asking, what are your day jobs? I've retired. Um, Go on, Pudge. Sorry. I retired um, six years ago. So over to you. Um, I am a delivery driver for a powder coating company. And I do that Monday to Friday. Finish early on Friday. Ed? I am a design engineer. Paul? Oh. Uh, decorator. Simon? Doing up an old house and uh, working in my wife's business doing astronomy stuff and teaching guitar a bit and recovering from gigs. <laughs> We're getting a lot of people wanting shout outs as well. Sorry, I can't get through everybody. I'm trying to look as many comments as I can, but they're flowing in. Yeah. Well, uh, again, we need to get another one organized so that we can go through these again, the ones that we haven't done. Yeah. Uh, okay, this one's from Mike Singleton. He says, I think it's great to see young kids headbanging at your gigs. How do you feel about them being there? 
fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely. Seeing the young generation is, uh, is, is great because yeah. we know we're, uh, we're, we're carrying the music on and on to generation after generation. Yeah, because when they're grown up, then you'll still be playing with them. <laughs> <laughs> It's always it's always good to uh, yeah to see the kids at the front because they have a great time and then we do the meet and greet afterwards and they're they're really happy to uh, to to see us and um, to to watch us perform. So I know when I was watching Livewire when I was uh, I started watching Livewire when I was fifteen and I remember meeting Ed for the first time and uh, being a young kid. At that age, it was it wasn't a really nice moment, a good moment meeting somebody that I looked up to that I saw on stage, and well, so many years later, here I am with him. He's a veteran now, and doing a great job. Yeah. Uh... This one's from Dave Gorman. Hi guys, what do you think of the Theatre Royal in St Helens? Hi Dave, hope you're all right. Hey. Stay yeah. safe, mate. Yeah, that was one of mine. Yeah, good, good gig. Love I really enjoyed gig. it. Yeah, good old-fashioned stage there, wouldn't it? Lots of big old wooden floorboards on it, and yeah. great crew, really nice crew. Enjoyed that gig. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was a great crowd. Yeah, a bit in there. of an old school type place, wasn't it? It was, yeah, yeah. There's all the big dressing rooms around the back. Yeah. Yeah, big gig. Big okay. rake stage. So we've got time for a few more questions. Yeah, very, very steep, yeah. Rake stage, yeah. Um, yeah. This one comes from James. I can't pronounce your surname. I do apologise. Um, do you enjoy the bigger venues or do you like the smaller, more intimate gigs like the Real Time Live in Chesterfield? Paul? All of them, really. I mean, you know, as I said, yeah. Real Time's <laughs> one of my favourites because it's just a fantastic <laughs> atmosphere. Yeah. So I think, I think the atmosphere can be great in a small venue as well as a bigger venue. And they normally are. All, all, nearly all the places we play, the atmosphere is the fans that make it. It doesn't matter the size of the place, really. Um, well, happy either way, yeah. you know. So I like um, the same as Paul, but I, I, sometimes I like the smaller venue because the band physically are closer to each other, and we feel like we can gel a bit yeah. more as individuals together on the stage. Yeah. Where the big stages are also fantastic for slightly different reasons, but when you're all together in a small venue and the crowd are with you, yeah, it's a great it's feeling. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I Ash J.D. Baker says to Dan, I'm thinking of a film. What is it? <laughs> That's a little in, in joke tough. for the band. Give the band <laughs> the ugly. Uh, um, all right, one more question. And seven then, words. Uh, I think we'll the final to wrap this up. Seven words. Uh, <laughs> First word. <laughs> what was it? Third word. Was it? Connect on spring cut. Hello, Ash. Nice to hear from you, Ash. All right, Ash. All right, we got one more question from David Shepherd. He says, how long did it take to get Thunderstruck down so you're all, all happy with it? Because that opening riff is a hard killer. Which one? Thunderstruck. We're happy with it yet. <laughs> Simon? Still working on it. Um... Well, it depends which gig he's talking about. I think he's just asking um, how long did it take for us to be happy with us performing it? Well, we were very happy until that moment where the cannons went off in Thunderstruck. <laughs> <laughs> I think we, we got it pretty quickly, didn't we? Yeah. I actually think that Thunderstruck is a very, very hard song to play with a lot of counter um, timing in it. It's a very strange song. Also, awful. when you have lineup changes, can affect the way you play it. So we've yeah. had lineup changes, and then suddenly it's fast or slower, or there's a different feel to it. Yeah, I think we've got it now as we want it. Call it a year. Right, I think that's it for uh, for tonight, guys. Can I just throw something in before we leave? 
Yes, go ahead. We don't um, have to go straight away. It's only the sound engineer that wants us to go so he can play darts. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did. I did notice there was a question from Mick Briggs um, about how we felt about um, Thunder in the Glens. Well, Mick, awesome. It was amazing, and to see all you guys there on your Harley Davidsons. I mean, obviously, I wear the authentic Harley Davidson gear and i tell you what to actually be amongst you guys of all the harley davidson it, it was just amazing yeah that was fantastic that's got to be a top gig for us isn't it yeah, oh, definitely. brilliant when yeah. we played in the osprey arena uh the, the osprey arena um yeah. even though it was three quarters of a mile walk from the dressing room yeah. um so getting to the stage and finding that i'd forgotten my iems and i had to walk all the way back again but <laughs> um yeah yeah great question mick um and, yeah, and also, in Gla yeah, yeah, Ian Gladstone, who organises it there, she's a fantastic guy. They, they, oh, terrific. You know, it, yeah. it's all, we're really, really looked after. Uh, and the after show party um, with uh, <laughs> Eddie and the Hot Rods. And, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. It was also great. We, um, we basically brought some beer and stuck it out. All the bars were closed. Um, yeah. And anybody who came into the hotel was came and we had a great big party. It was a fantastic night. Anyway, there's, quickly, there was another question about the east coast of Scotland as well, seeing as Abbey Moore's up there. Um, we were asked if we were going to do any more shows there, and hopefully, when all this goes away, we will be up there um, in Fraserburgh and Elgin in September. September. So, yeah. And we will be up. Right. Cool. Yeah, we've had loads of comments for shout-outs. Sorry we couldn't get them all around, and we hope everybody... Stay safe, and we all yeah. we all thank you, and we look forward to seeing you when we all get back at it. And we'll hopefully do maybe another Q and A session in the not too distant future. Yeah, and if you've got any, and if you've got any questions or anything you want to fire onto the Live Wire website, um, so you can keep in contact with us and go to Dan's vlogs, seeing us out on the road. Um, you want to know anything else? You know, when we're going to do a Q and A again. Stay in contact because you're the most important thing to us. You, 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 are, you are just. We're all we're all active on Facebook and oh. online. Yeah, you just we're don't know to how important to you guys are. It's amazing. It's, we're so so missing every single one of you. And, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's you, you know you, you, you make the shows what they are, um, and all the hard work is so well worth it. So. For those of you who haven't had questions answered tonight, and but 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 have you know thrown questions our way, thank you so so much. It, this for me, and I know that we we had a few words before we went live tonight amongst all the members in Livewire, uh, including John and Tim, um, who are sound engineer and stage manager respectively. Um, this felt like a gig for me. Because yeah, you know, we've not gigged now for like five and a half weeks. The last gig we done was at was at Legends in Yarmouth, um, and we miss you so much. I mean, you wouldn't believe how stir crazy we're going. We're locked in like you guys, and we're doing the best we can with it. But if we can all keep each other going, then the sooner we get back to it, then the better. But we are missing all of you out there, and thank you so much for your support. And I'm yeah, sure I speak you. for every other member of Livewire, uh, the ACDC show. Thanks for coming on here tonight and stay in touch with us. Keep sending us messages to the website. Yeah. Say hi. Cheers, guys.